one of the ideas that I that you'll hear me say a lot in class is multiple perspectives. And it's easy to smile and nod at someone when they say multiple perspectives, but to actually embrace in someone's understanding of a work that is different than your own understanding of the work is different than saying, yes, I accept multiple perspectives. Um, and more so with podcasts than with, with textbook readings, I find that students interpret it differently. And I'm not sure why the interpretation um, differs more, um, perhaps because it's more of a dialogue than, an, than a traditional reading. I, I'm not really sure. Um, but how do I get them to then embrace that and, and discuss that and come out with not a shared understanding, but a mutual respect for an opinion that differs than my own and that, and not just an opinion, but an opinion that can be substantiated with evidence, right? And so they have to come with their opinion and be able to back it up and, and, and to respectfully hear someone else and to potentially point out some flaws in logic, because that's definitely acceptable um, in our class. Um, and in order for that person to strengthen their own opinion when they see a flaw in logic um, addressed. Um, but again, my goal is not for them to come to a, to a shared understanding, but a mutual respect for one another's work. Yeah, there's lots of um, intentionality on my behalf to bridge theory to practice. Um, I'll, I'll often pause and say, so what? That doesn't sound really academic, but it gets their attention. So what? Why does this matter? And if we don't engage in that practice, um, I fear that students don't ever ask themselves that question. The so what for them is what grade did I get? And that's not the goal that I'm working towards. And so you'll often hear me pause and just say, so what? And, and the students will look at each other and they'll go, okay, why does this matter? How might this, my, how might I see this actually happening in my own daily conversations? Um, and so by asking that, I'm both asking my students to project what this might look like but also training them to be able to ask that question themselves when they become teachers. Because if you can't answer the so what about what you're teaching, your students won't be able to answer that either. When my students are excited about a topic, I'm always willing to put the time in. But when my students are excited about the topic, then I feel like I owe it to them to do the absolute best job that I can and prepare them to the best of my ability. And so seeing my students so actively engaged um, when we implemented this strategy has just encouraged me to spend more time trying to create dynamite um, experiences for my students um, in the classroom. And um, when I use the podcast, as we talked about earlier, it doesn't um, present the information as maybe systematically or technically as, as a textbook would, how can I lead the conversation to still include that, those topics and those ideas and those, and those, those technical aspects? Um, and, uh, and, and how can I do that without lecturing at them, but co-constructing this? And so it's really created a space for me to be really reflective about my teaching and become better at my questioning strategies so that the students will come at that on their own and then I can just say, it's a brilliant idea you have. And the really important people over there, they called it this instead of the word that you used. Um, and then bridging their own ideas to be, to, uh, their own language to become more academic in nature. Um, and I find that then they use it more than when I was using a textbook and there was a bold word and there was a definition that they were supposed to memorize, but rather when they come to the, the idea and the importance of the idea and naming the idea after the fact has been a really strong teaching practice. I think the dream for me would be to capture the moments that are happening, the strong moments that are happening in the classroom um, by asking students to create their own dialogues um, and record them um, through podcasts and recognize 
that they are hitting some really deep and interesting topics that they can then create a space for someone else to engage in the same dialogue and that it can be free and readily posted available online if they so choose um, to do that.